welcome to our introduction video for the season of Lent and our parish retreat. Lent begins soon, and it's a season of grace. The Orthodox call it Great and Holy Lent, and I think that helps us enter into maybe the spirit of it a little bit more. We've gotten used to Lent being something that we do, something that's every year, maybe something you've participated in, in the past, and that's good. But what if this year Lent was great and it was holy? What if this year you met Jesus? What if you heard him speaking to you? What if you heard him moving in your heart and in your life? What if you were a different person 46 days after the season begins because of your encounter with Christ? That's what we're aiming for in Lent. We have some great things coming up here at our parish that are a part of it. Lent traditionally has three major areas, prayer and fasting and almsgiving. Prayer is the first one, and it points in the direction of what Lent is all about, that Lent is about an encounter with God. Some people in the past might have described Lent as a season where you give something up, and that's true, you should give up things. But it's so that you have the time and the space in your life to grow in a relationship with God. It's so that you have a chance and an opening and a space in your heart to hear his voice. Lent is centered around this theme in a way of joining Jesus in the desert. He goes into the desert for 40 days to pray and to fast, and he faces temptations. He goes into the desert, he leaves the noise of the city behind him so that there is space in his heart to encounter his relationship with his Father. It's always there. He's the Son of God. He has, the, he has this constant relationship with his Father and with the Holy Spirit. But even he, as an example for us, goes out into the desert to fast and to pray. And that encounter with him is primary. When you look at the history of the scriptures, they describe it again and again in the Old Testament as a wedding feast, as a time where the Lord began to date his people. Most of us wouldn't think of going on a date in the desert. I certainly wouldn't. But the image holds that it is a time and a place to encounter the Lord, where we are invited to open our hearts to Him. So prayer is the most important part, that in some way, no matter what you do for the season of Lent, you should strive to grow in your prayer, to grow in a relationship with God. Fasting works on our own self-mastery, on our own uh, work in taming our desires, in leading our soul in the right direction. Fasting is all about learning to say no to a good thing here and now that's present to me so that my will is strengthened, so that I encounter the Lord, so that I can cling to the things of heaven. Fasting is an important practice. We are not very good at it, or at least I can say I'm not. And fasting is something that is necessary. This is the classical choosing things to give up. That's a great place to start, choosing some things to leave behind some ways of being stretched. And it could be something waking up at a certain time in the morning so that there's time to pray. It could be something of going to bed at a certain time. It could be with food and choosing not to eat certain meals, giving up desserts. It could be giving up alcohol. Sometimes Lent can be a great time to engage in one of these practices you know you should be doing for a long time and you haven't done yet. That's fasting turning against ourselves, turning against our own desire, working on self-mastery and self-control, with the grace and the assistance of God, certainly. Um, but it works on our relationship, on putting things in right order inside ourselves. Almsgiving is a third of the great practices of the season of Lent, and almsgiving, in a sense, works on our relationship with the material world. Almsgiving encourages us to look at the needs of our neighbor. Sometimes those are material, and one way to participate in almsgiving is by making donations. Sometimes those needs are spiritual, and it's a presence. It's being with someone, it's being a good friend, it's giving of our time and our abilities in that way. Sometimes people's needs are for things like volunteers. Organizations definitely need a lot of volunteers. That can be a great way to give back to the people around you. Prayer and fasting and almsgiving. You can choose many different ways to fulfill these, many different things to do, but they're the heart, the invitation in the season of Lent, 
There are some of the ways that we leave behind our city and go out into the desert to be with Jesus, to encounter him, to hear him speak to our hearts, to hear him move in our lives. And a huge piece of this is our parish retreat. This is mostly on the level of prayer, but it is going to be a time and a place to encounter God. The invitation <laughs> is to commit to a certain kind of prayer level to make something stable. Maybe it's 10 minutes a day, maybe it's 20 minutes a day, maybe it's 30 minutes a day. We have some scripture passages that we'll send out to you. They're on the bookmarks that were handed out on Ash Wednesday and will be available on our Lent tables around the parish, the north entrance and on the street entrance. Passages that will begin to walk you through the life of Jesus. They follow the 30-day retreat of St. Ignatius Loyola. That was kind of taking the spiritual wisdom of many people before him and putting it together in a neat little book that contains some spiritual exercises. So some of them are from that. Some of them are based on his themes. And the spiritual exercises begin with the fight against sin, the beginning of Lent, that we have God who has created us in goodness and love and mercy. He has called us to live in relationship with him, that at every moment of our life we're invited into that. His invitation is unchanging and we're invited to respond. And our response is sometimes, yeah, we don't always do the greatest, right? We sin, we fall short. The just man sins seven times a day. No one is righteous, not even one. And so this first beginning of the spiritual exercises looks at both the goodness of God and his blessing with gratitude and also the problem of sin. What do I deserve? What would be my punishment or my penalty? Where does my sin go? Where is it leading me? And it's an, an examination of your life. Where have things been? Where have your priorities been? Have you been serving the Lord? Have you placed him first? Are you seeking to strive and to follow him in every way that you can? That's a huge part of this first week. Looking at yourself, looking at these things, so that in confessing your sins to God and approaching him in love and mercy and saying, Lord, I have fallen short, you can receive the forgiveness of your sins and rise to a new life of grace. And then the succeeding weeks of the spiritual exercises will begin with the life of Jesus in week one and his public teaching and this movement. And then in week two, it's his passion that begins on Palm Sunday and goes all the way through Holy Week. And then the last week of the retreat is about the resurrection, the resurrection appearances, that we know the story doesn't end with the death of Jesus, but continues on. The Lenten retreat is an invitation to join and to enter into the Spirit. So there are some scripture passages. They're on those bookmarks. They'll be in different places. There will be lots of explanations and things like the bulletin that are there to lead you and to guide you along the path. And maybe you can't do it every day. Maybe you don't get to it every day. But it's an invitation what if you encountered the Lord? What if you found him? There's different things to pray with, and that's a place to start. There will also be a prayer class. We're offering the Oremus series. Um, it was done by the Augustine Institute, and it's all about how to pray with the scriptures. In fact, one of our other videos that you'll find as a part of this playlist for the season of Lent will talk us through and walk through um, one of the prayer times, or just what something might be like, and try to unpack and to help you connect with, oh, okay, I want to be a part of this, I want to participate in the retreat, that's great, so what do I do? Like, okay, I'm going to commit to 20 minutes, or I'm going to commit to a half hour, and I sit down, and then what? Exactly. That's what the video will explain. And that's what Aramus explains. Um, it will walk you through and give you a chance to encounter this with other people, to have someone there to bounce questions off of, to learn and to grow. Prayer is not about getting it right the first time. Prayer is about striving and being persistent. Because if you persevere in prayer, God will bring you where you need to be. Another piece of our Lenten retreat is a day of recollection. This will happen in March this year. 
A day of recollection is kind of a day to take a pause and step back from the way that you've been living and the things that you've been doing. We'll probably base ours on the work of St. Francis de Sales, An Introduction to the Devout Life, partially because it's a book made for lay people. It's a book made for people like you. It's got a whole bunch of short meditations that are a couple of pages long. He does a fantastic job. He goes through all of these different areas about living with the spouse and living with kids and virtues to grow into. And he is <coughs> famous for having a good perspective on finding a balance, finding something that you're capable of doing. So we'll have some conferences. There'll be some quiet time for prayer. We will provide lunch. The times for that are 9 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon when uh, confessions begin in the church and then you're certainly invited to join us for the Sunday Mass that day. You also have the option to meet with a priest. We would encourage you if you have not met with a priest for a while to talk about your prayer, to talk about some of these things, maybe to learn and to grow a little bit. This is a time where Father Ross and I both want to be available to you to schedule some times. There will be some that you can sign up for. If those don't work, please feel free to call us. We are here to serve you. We're not here to have meetings. At least, I'm not here to have meetings. He likes meetings a little bit more than I do, but uh, those are secondary. We're here to serve you, to be with you, to celebrate the sacraments, to be a guide, to be a brother in Christ and a cheerleader and sometimes a little bit of a parent and to give you a push in the right direction. Anything that we can do that would help. So those are an opportunity to meet with a priest. That's one I would encourage you to take advantage of. They can be a lot of fun. Um, and maybe it'll be a connection that you can grow in. There's going to be a lot happening in the season of Lent. This is just a beginning, a short introduction to talk about some of these parts of the retreat, to talk about the season of Lent. We hope you have a great season. There's other information available. Some of it will be linked below this video. Um, Ideas for Lent, ideas for penance, ideas for prayer and fasting and almsgiving. We have lots of things that we are going to try and do in order to serve you better and to help you enter more fully into this season. Because I am confident that with the grace of the Lord, you will find him. He will come to meet you and he can fill your heart with his goodness and his love. That this can be not just a Lent, not just a time that you had a season but a time where you met Jesus, a fork in the road that changed your life forever. That's what we're aiming for, and it's not easy. Lent can be hard. We might not do it right right away. I'm certainly in that boat. I will probably forget by Thursday what my stuff was on Ash Wednesday. But Lent is to strive, to try, to get up and dust yourself off and say, you know what, I can do better. The Lord is calling me to do better, and I can meet him. I hope you have a blessed season of Lent and that you do encounter Christ. You do encounter his love for you in the scriptures and in so many other places. My hope for you is that your life is transformed and may God make it happen. Amen.